This is the Snapmaker 2, and it has got to be the most unusual laser I've ever reviewed on this channel, because not only is it a laser, but it's also a CNC router as well as 3D printer. It's kind of like if you took the Xtool D1, combined it with a 3020 CNC as well as a large scale 3D printer, and packed it all into this one package. Let's find out how this stacks up to each of those individually and see if this all-in-one solution is the right solution for you. So there's so much to the Snapmaker that we're actually gonna be breaking up this review into three videos. One's gonna focus on 3D printing, then on the CNC router, and in this one, we're gonna take a look at the laser diode module that is currently attached to it. And really what I'm trying to see is how does this machine stack up as a laser versus the other laser options that are on the market. So the Snapmaker actually started as a Kickstarter project way back in 2017. That was the original Snapmaker. And then they came out with a new Kickstarter in 2020 to create the Snapmaker 2.0, which this is a version of that. And since the 2.0 release, they've actually made several more big improvements to the machine. Mainly the power module, which you can't see right up here at the top. It is much quieter than what they had before. And if I open up this enclosure, which we'll get to in a minute. So the linear rails have larger rods inside. They went from eight millimeters up to 20 millimeters. And they're actually inside of this metal ribbon. So especially when you're doing the CNC routing and all the dust that's gonna come, you're not gonna get that gunking up the screws. And they upped the stepper motor chip to the TMC 2209, which is much quieter. So if you are running this, especially as a laser or a 3D printer, the noise isn't going to be as much of an issue as it might have been before. And then last is improvements that they made to the 3D printing module, but we'll get into that in the 3D printing specific review. And if that's done, you can check it out right up there. Now, before we get into all the specs, I want to talk about assembly for a second. This might have been the nicest set of instructions I've ever got for any of the machines I put together. I mean, I put together some kind of crazy imports from China where you basically get nothing. Uh, you're kind of figuring it out from just like a black and white PDF, but this thing steps it up to another level. In fact, this is the assembly workbook. I mean, this is a full, nice color illustrations that walks you step-by-step -step on how to put this thing together. Once I saw this, as well as how they labeled and clearly communicated all of the boxes, I was like, this is gonna be really nice. And then just like on a personal side of things, they give you this uh, little toolbox and the tools are actually pretty nice inside. I mean, I've been using this little Allen key driver a ton. I mean, just look how this stuff is labeled. This is your hot end kit. Or here are your silicone plugs that you can use to hold things down. And that labeling and attention to detail extends to the entire assembly of this machine. The assembly is gonna take a good amount of time. It's gonna take you several hours to get the entire thing put together. And then if you add on this enclosure, which is an entirely separate purchase, this also is going to take a little bit to put together. But once you have the entire thing assembled, the fit and the finish is real nice. Everything is rock solid. Overall, it's just a nice kit. You can get this in a 150, 250, or 350 millimeter work bed size because this work area is 320 in the X, 350 in the Y, and then 330 in the Z. So for what you're getting, this is a pretty big work area. Now, if you're comparing this to other laser diode machines, most of the time those are in the 400 millimeter range. So those are going to be bigger, but this one works entirely different because as you can see the work bed actually moves. So this is like a Prusa i3 style machine where the work bed moves in the Y axis. And then this whole gantry is actually stationary and this moves along the X axis. In general, on a design side of things, this really is pretty unique. Even though this kind of has your standard 3D printer setup, these linear modules are a lot beefier. Those rods are a lot thicker than what you typically find because it knows you're gonna have to be putting CNC router loads on it, meaning it's gonna be carving through wood. So you're gonna need something that's a lot beefier. And it supports a lot of different add-ons with the CAN, which is this controller area network, which is kind of on the back of this machine right here. This is gonna be where you're gonna hook up all the different linear rails. So this is what's gonna control the stepper motors. This is also gonna be where you hook up your different modules, your laser CNC or 3D printer, but you can also get several add-ons like this big enclosure, which is around this entire machine, which features these LED lights and a powered exhaust fan in the back. And with everything plugged into mine currently, I still have two open slots for additional accessories. And you can see right here, some of the other ones they have out there, like this air filter or a rotary for four axis stuff, like with a laser or a CNC, but they really do position this as kind of like the Lego of the maker tools. So you can kind of build it for the different things that you want to make. Now this is set up for laser engraving and cutting currently. Each of the different functions actually have a different work bed. So the 3D printer, you've got a flexible magnetic bed. The CMC has an MD 
MDF wasteboard, and the laser has a slotted aluminum bed, which is a really good job of getting the airflow underneath your material. A lot of the other dyed machines really don't give you a surface to laser cut or laser engrave on top of. So another solution to this would be like a honeycomb bed that you might have seen on bigger machines. It's pretty easy to install. You just have several screws on these four different sections. And that is one area I wish was a little bit easier. If you're gonna switch this to any of the different modes, it is gonna take a second to unscrew the module, screw a new one on, and then put on the work bed. It's not like an instantaneous switch. Most of the time, I imagine you're gonna keep this set up in one of these options. Now it is a all metal construction. And these linear rails, you've got two for your Z axis, you've got one for your X, and then you have two for your Y. These are really unique. These are a lot different than the smaller aluminum extrusion that you might see on the other diode machines where they're going to use belts and wheels to drive the whole machine. So these have 20 millimeter linear rods inside of this assembly. And because it's running off rods and not belts, you kind of have a trade off. On the positive side of things, it's really not going to skip in terms of steps. So if you have belts, your belts can kind of slip and then your stepper motor might skip a few steps while it's turning. And the nice thing about belts is you can actually run them faster. So typically the max speed on those other diode machines like the X-Tool D1 of the O2 or Laser Master Engraver 2 or anything from Sculpt Fun or Adam Stack or all the other reviews that I've done, they max out at 10,000 millimeters per minute. From what I'm finding, this is about 6,000 millimeters per minute. So that's the max speed that you can run. Another the nice feature of this machine, which is just executed really well, is this color touchscreen. So this gives you access to machine controls. So you can just control the machine straight up and you can jog it around and it's giving you a digital readout of all the different coordinates. You can also load files directly to the internal memory on this machine or with a small USB drive. And then you can run those directly from the controller. And then depending on what module you have set up, it's gonna have different features as well. Specifically with this one, you can do calibration, which is gonna calibrate the height of the laser module above your material because with lasers, there is a very very specific point, which is the focused is the tightest, which means you're gonna get the finest line as well as the best laser power. And this does a pretty unique process where it makes a little ruler, but each of the little tally marks, it raises up just a hair. And then it uses onboard cameras that it has with this module to figure out which one is the thinnest. And then it automatically sets its Z height. And then you also get separate controls to accessories that you add on, like with this enclosure. Once it's plugged in, you can turn the LEDs on and off directly from the pad, as well as turn on the exhaust, which you might be able to hear it now, or turn it off. And then just a the fun part about this is you can definitely move this off. It's still attached with a cable, but it's more or less like a little Android tablet that you can move around. This right here is part of the enclosure, but this is the stand for if you just have the machine. It's a magnetic on the back. If you move this up to the front and I shut this door, which the doors kind of are easy to get caught. So that is one drawback, but you get it for the most part. When that closes, you still have access to your pad right here. And speaking of this enclosure, you have doors on both sides of the machine. So this one gives you great access to obviously the front, jump in there, put things on. But then the side one is nice because a lot of times you're having to either hook something up right here or so it's easier to get into your material from the side versus the front. In terms of connection, the primary connection is going to be over Wi-Fi. So on a computer, you can open up their software, the Lubin software, and then you can send files from that to the machine. You can either run it from the computer wirelessly or you can load those files directly onto the machine itself and then run it from here. And there's also a USB connection, so you can just hook up your computer directly to it. Or in the case of a laser, you can take a G-code file, upload that to a USB stick, drop it in and then run it from the USB as well. So in no way does this need to be connected to the internet. It just uses Wi-Fi to make it a lot easier to send files to the machine, but you do have a bunch of different options as well if you don't have Wi-Fi in your shop. So let's talk about this laser module. This is a 1.6 watt laser module. And that's probably the biggest drawback that I've seen with this machine because any other diode that you're going to get for the most part is going to start out at at least 5.5 watts, so a good bit stronger. And currently there's several 10 watt modules like with the X-Tool D1 or Atom Stack or Niji that you're able to buy. And then very soon there's even going to be 20 watt modules. I've actually just got one from X-Tool I'll be able to test out. So 1.6 is way at the low end in terms of 
what they provide. Now, SnapMaker knows that, and they actually released a 10 watt version of this module because at 1.6 watts, for the most part, you're just gonna be engraving. I mean, you can cut stuff. It's just gonna take a really long time unless you're using like paper or cardstock. But if you're getting into wood or acrylic, you're gonna have to run this really slow. And more than likely, you're gonna have to do multiple passes. And because of that, the edge finish wasn't going to be the best. I really didn't have much luck cutting. All the tests that you're seeing are pretty much just straight engraving to get an idea of what the performance would be like. Now this module actually has two features that pretty much no other diode machine currently offers right out of the box. One is an integrated camera, which serves a couple different functions. First, it uses the camera to autofocus. So when it goes through that ruler autofocus process, it's using that camera to figure out which line is the smallest, but then it can also take several pictures of your workpiece and then overlay that in their software. And then you can get an idea of where you're going to either engrave or cut on your actual workpiece. That's something you've probably seen with larger laser machines like Glowforge or the full spectrum Muse, but pretty much any diode laser has a function where it can turn the laser on at a really low power, and then it can run a boundary around where it is going to engrave. And 99 times out of 100, that's what I wind up using anyway, because it winds up being more exact, and usually it winds up being a little bit quicker just to get things lined up. Now, the second feature they have is integrated air assist, meaning that they have air blowing through the system and then blowing out the nozzle, just helping to clear out the dust and the debris, as well as put out any potential fires as you are engraving. Now, I think it's pretty much just an internal fan, which is sucking air in through these vents and then pushing it down the bottom. The bigger and kind of more real air assist systems actually have an external compressor, which is pushing compressed air through the entire system. So it's going to be a stronger stream of air, which you definitely you're gonna need as you get into higher wattages. But doing it this way at 1.6 watts actually works pretty well and it's all super clean. So you don't have any extra hoses or any loud compressors running. It does a great job. Now of the three modules, the laser is probably the most dangerous. I see tons of 3D printer reviews. They'll talk about thermal runaway and then the machine can heat up and catch fire, which is absolutely horrible. But lasers literally are fire for the most part that's coming out constantly. So it is very easy for something to catch fire. And so you have to be very, very careful and monitor this pretty much all the time. Now the air assist definitely helps with that. And because this is such a low wattage, it's gonna be pretty hard to get something to ignite. But a couple other features that they do offer if the controller is disconnected or if it disconnects from the computer, it's automatically going to kill the laser. And then to save your eyes so you can see, this acrylic door is coated with pretty much the same acrylic that you'd use with safety glasses, which they also provide. Now you're seeing my light right here reflecting, but just know you still can see through it, but it's gonna filter out a lot of that harmful light. Because once you have this entire thing shut, another added safety measure is they have a fan on the back that is exhausting any of the fumes that this might be generating. But pretty much all those other diode machines are just like open air. They have done a pretty good job of protecting your eyes just with a filter directly around the laser module itself. But having this thing completely enclosed with an exhaust system built onto it. That's usually a feature you're only gonna get once you step up into the bigger CO2 laser machines. Also, another nice safety feature is if you have the enclosure plugged in, there are sensors on both of these doors. So if the laser is running and you open this up, it's going to kill the power to the laser. Now I use their software Lubin to do a few simple things. You can import graphics, you can add in text and simple shapes, and then you're gonna be able to assign a speed and a power setting to each of those objects. So it's a pretty easy workflow, especially if you're familiar with lasers at all. But even if you're not, they make it pretty easy to get up and get going. But pretty much with all of my machines, I wind up using Lightburn, which is paid, but it is much more powerful. I was having a few issues actually getting it to connect directly to the machine. I've seen other people do it. My computer was just being weird. So what I wound up doing was just exporting G code from Lightburn and then sending it to the machine. And that works totally fine as well. Because what I love to do with all of these machines is actually compare it with this test file. So this is three millimeter birch plywood and we do some engraving and some cutting. Although in this case, we weren't able to cut through this because the power is so low. Now this one, I didn't adjust any of the settings. You can actually see I have a grid of speed as well as power. Power. The speed goes all the way up to 9,000, um, but you can actually tell pretty much after 6,000, it's not getting any darker because it's not going any faster. So 6,000 definitely is the top limit. But when you're looking at engraving, you're kind of wanting to find a really good grayscale solid square boxes. So if you want to do an image engraving, you can kind of get an idea of where you want to set your power and your speed. I would have to set this all the way down to at least 1,000. And 
some of their settings recommend going down even to 800. This file also has a cutting section. Now I even did a test where I would do a multiple passes, but I still wasn't able to cut through this material. So if you are gonna wind up doing cutting, again, you're gonna be using really soft wood like basswood that is pretty thin, or you're gonna be using stuff like cardboard, paper, cardstock, really thin stuff. Now if you do already have a laser dyed machine or you wind up picking up this and you want to use this test file on your machine, you can check it out at the link down below. What this really helps you do is figure out the right settings for your material to get what you want. In terms of engraving, this test is gonna give you a good idea of where you're going to get your best result, but you can also do it the fastest for the least amount of power so that you not only save time, but you also save the life of your diode. And then you can also see at what point you're gonna start cutting the material out. Now, as a point of comparison, you can see this is with the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, which is a 5.5 watt module. And you can just see it's going to get a lot darker, a lot sooner, and a lot lower speeds. That's a lot of a lots versus the 1.6 watt module. Now really my main drawback with this style machine for laser engraving is the fact that the work bed is going to move. So most of the time you don't have to worry about securing your material to the work bed unless it's like paper and you're going to worry about air blowing it around. But in this case because the bed is moving it's going to introduce a lot of movement and so you're going to have to secure it down. They provide these little rubber guys which kind of work but if you're getting thicker material you might want to have more of a clamping solution where you kind of clip it from the sides and then also that's just going to introduce some vibrations in general as the laser is engraving because you're working with such a small laser dot spot but in the few tests that i did it's really not going to be noticeable because you're not going to run this at super high speeds anyway okay so would i recommend this machine let's talk about price for a second currently you're in the 1500 to like 1800 range which is substantially more than a normal normal laser diode. Those start at 300 and they get up in the thousand dollar range. But again, this machine is a lot more than just a laser diode. So I would say if you're just wanting a laser engraver, go with one of the other options. I've done tons of reviews of those right there. You can figure out which one works best for you. But if you're looking for one tool that is more than just one tool, this could be a great option, especially because they've made tons of improvements to this over the years. A lot of times you'll see a lot of excitement around a Kickstarter machine. They launch and they sell and then it kind of dies off. But this is the second version of that machine and they've already added lots of upgrades to it since then. And because it's modular, you're gonna be able to add those improvements to it over time. Now I've been comparing this with the Xtool D1, which is currently my favorite standalone diode laser machine. We're gonna jump to that review right now. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.